So, I've been planning on making this video for a little while and I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to tackle this subject. But as of today, March 3rd in Korea, Korea now has about 4,800, almost 5,000 cases of coronavirus. So first, I wanted to talk about the situation here in Korea and then I also wanted to share my personal experience as someone who is living here. However, thankfully out of all of those cases, we only have about 29 to 30 confirmed deaths, which is actually a lot less than other countries who have less cases than we do. Which means that there are countries with fewer confirmed cases of coronavirus, but they have a higher death rate than Korea does. Hmm, makes you kind of wonder why that's the case. Korea has been testing tens of thousands of people, which is honestly the best it has been in the world. The fact that we have even drive-through testing just to prevent others from getting sick while at the same time keeping tested efficient and quick is really smart on Korea. February 28th, Korea has tested 40,000 people, whereas Japan has tested around 1,800 people and America has only tested about 400 people. So even though it seems like Korea's numbers are really high, but in reality, if Japan or America or any other countries had tested the amount of people that Korea has, the numbers of confirmed cases would probably be pretty similar, if not more. So if people are really scared about Korea, honestly, I just think that Korea is probably the best to be during this time. And that's kind of the scary thing about other countries as well. When it comes to America, they're barely testing anyone. And I have friends who have traveled back to America from South Korea and they said that no one has been tested. Whereas in Korea airports, as soon as you fly in, they are checking you, they're checking your temperature. I mean, they're keeping you there because they really want to make sure that everyone is properly tested. And so that's why the numbers seem so skewed. Most of these people who are dying are generally older or they have some sort of sickness that they've already had beforehand. And so thankfully, I guess if you are young, you don't really have to worry so much about the virus, but you should take care of yourself because you don't want to spread it to anyone who is older or who has some underlying health issues. So how is it actually like in Korea? Is everyone panicking? Is it as wild and scary as these pictures may lead it to be? And the answer is, yes it is. Oh my god, guys. I mean, look at this gift that I found of this family eating together with their mask on. This is the norm, 100%. Ah nah, I'm just joking. It's actually quite chill for the most part. Honestly, people are just going out a lot less. I mean, the streets are a lot more quieter, restaurants are a lot more emptier, there's no one in a bar, and basically everyone is just getting delivery. I mean, honestly, like Korean delivery is really efficient and really fast, so I guess everyone is just kind of propped at home getting delivery food and not going outside. Which does suck for a typical business who really relies on a lot of tourists or people to come to their area, but I guess it's good for delivery people. I guess they're making a lot of money. People are practicing really good hygiene. For example, you can find hand sanitizer literally everywhere. This, this. By literally everywhere, I mean I see this in restaurants, I see this at bars, it's on the bus, it's on the elevator. There's always gonna be hand sanitizer there and available for you to use, which is pretty great. So Korea is making sure to practice really good hygiene. You can see a lot of posters and pictures talking about how to properly clean your hands, which you would think people would already kind of know how to do that beforehand, but <laughs> it kind of shows you how to wash your hands for 30 seconds. They make sure to tell people to cough in their arms because in Korea, it is true when people are sick, they don't typically tend to cover their mouths. They kind of just spit it out. It's like I've been coughed on so many times. So I'm glad that nowadays people are really taking into consideration on proper hygiene. And so that way it helps prevent spreading the virus even more. Also, everyone's been wearing a mask, kind of like these here. So these are a variety of different types of masks, I guess. So there are these masks, which I guess are like less protected-y. <laughs> and then you can kind of get more advanced. Usually the 94 mask is what they recommend but you can also get the 3M mask, which are even a little bit more serious. But the thing in Asia is that usually when you are sick, you always wear a mask, not even to prevent you from getting sick, but to prevent others from getting sick. And at the very least, it prevents you from touching your face, which is one of the biggest ways to contract the virus is from your hands to your face. But I would say the biggest downside about these masks are the fact that they are almost three to four times the price online and in person, which is absolutely ridiculous you know during a pandemic you want to try and make as much profit as possible 
and not only that they are sold out and so it's really hard to find masks because you can go to a lot of places and on the front door it will say we do not have masks so these are Korean pharmacies and places this place says no mask and also this place has no mask so as you can see there are no masks about even there are a couple pharmacies also lined up over there said all their masks were sold out <sighs> just because so many people have been frantically searching for masks and then buying a bunch of them and then hoarding them at home but no seriously thankfully the government is trying to do something about it and so they are doing like mass auctions sort of and so basically what the government is doing is offering masks at a cheap normal price and so what you can do is say at 10 a.m. at this specific place you can buy masks and so people are lining up to buy masks and usually the lines are super long but the fact is is that we are in dire need of masks and there's a mask shortage other than that korea has been doing a wonderful job of informing people about this virus as i mentioned earlier there are a lot of posters that are showing how to stay properly hygienic who to contact if you feel like you do have the virus there are signs in multiple languages everywhere even the train stations are constantly announcing about the virus and how to stay healthy and well in all languages so i think it's really cool because korea is not focusing on just korean language but also considering the foreigners who do live here from all over the world. Constantly I'm getting phone alerts and everyone else is also getting phone alerts especially if you are in an area where someone may have had the virus or they have traveled through or if you feel like you've been in the same area as that person they do offer free testing so I think it's absolutely amazing that they're constantly keeping you up to date and making sure that everyone is well aware of what is going on. I mean there are even websites such as Corona Ita which means Corona is here and basically you can kind of type in your location and it will show you within a three kilometer proximity of where someone who had the virus may have walked across or some facility that they may have went into and honestly the fact that Korea has been so on it with the information makes me feel very comfortable and safe here despite the high numbers that we have. It's just more so it just feels kind of like a ghost town out in the outside world because people have just been staying home. Now honestly I do want to talk about the downsides of this virus. Just for one, my personal experience as an English teacher, my sixth graders had their graduation about a few weeks ago and because of the virus um, they couldn't have their graduation in the ceremony hall i don't remember what you call it so they couldn't have their graduation there which was really unfortunate and so my students had to have their graduations in their classrooms and the parents couldn't even go the parents had to like stand outside and i'm sure it's not just my school i'm sure this had happened to other middle schools and high schools and also the new semester is constantly being pushed back so school is supposed to technically start march 1st they said that they were going to push it back a week but now it might be two weeks three weeks it could be april that could be a good thing I guess if you're a kid or you're a teacher. So now I want to talk about me and myself and how I'm handling this situation. Am I suffering? Am I going through a lot? But the thing is, I recently just moved and I have planned on traveling throughout Korea slash Japan for a little bit, but because of the virus, I decided to just lay low. Thankfully, I was adopted into a nice Kenyan family, actually, and so I'm currently staying here and I'll probably be here for about one to two months, basically until the virus dies down. My biggest concern was the fact that my visa in Korea expires in the end of March but because of the virus the Korea government has been very kind enough to extend all visas who are expiring in March so now my visa does not expire until the end of April so I'm allowed to be here for an additional two more months now and I did think about going back to the US but the healthcare thing is what's really keeping me back. I think the fact that Korea is so efficient and if you do test positive for the virus, it's free, you don't have to pay at all. Whereas in America though, if I wanna get checked, I have to spend thousands of dollars. I'm not even insured in America because I'm not working there. And so I thought about going back to America, but I realized it's probably just safer to stick it out here in Korea. Because I am in Korea, certain rules have been applied to me as well. There are about 50, plus countries that have restricted travel uh, from slash to Korea and because I am also here as well there are countries I cannot go to or if I do go to those countries I will be quarantined for about two weeks and so that is a little bit uncomfortable for me because now I'm more limited to where I can go 
and so again that's just more reason to stay here in seoul plus i am young so if i do get sick it won't be that bad hopefully and i'm making sure to stay healthy and well but my big concern would be to spread it to the elderly which is something i do not want to happen or do and honestly i just want to give a shout out to all the health professionals out there because they are honestly on it some of these health professionals have been wearing masks all day long and goggles and even with the testing because korea is testing so much that means these workers are working all day and night to test people and so i think it's absolutely amazing that they are on it and i just want to give a shout out to them because without them most of us won't be able to have this peace of mind so thank you to those health professionals as well so that concludes my video and this topic if you do want to stay up to date about what is going on here feel free to follow me on instagram or twitter and if you have any questions feel free to leave them below as well and honestly just try to stay as safe as possible because this virus is a global virus thank you so much for watching this video i hope it was informative and i will see you all in the next video